everyone, it's Tori, and today's video is a special request to talk about my inventory spreadsheet. So, you know, I couldn't say no. Uh, so anyway, if you are brand new here, hello, uh, I am an online small business owner together with my husband, partner, and best friend, Bill, and we are online resellers. That's our business. We sell mostly clothing and mostly on Poshmark. So today's video is, like I said, a requested video to walk through the process of how I created my inventory spreadsheet for reselling um, in numbers specifically. So I am a spreadsheet junkie. I love them so much. I use Google Sheets. I use Excel. I use numbers. Uh, for the business, I have selected numbers to use, and there are a couple reasons why. Number one, I use Mac for all of my devices. So my you know, Bill and I's phones are both uh, Mac products. We both have iPhones. I have my work computer. So my laptop, I have our other computer, which is also a Mac. And so for compatibility and ease of use, I chose numbers. And uh, I've been using numbers since I first started this inventory spreadsheet. I've been working on it since uh, April of 2018, if I'm being honest, when I first started keeping track and when the business began. So um, I've really figured out a way to make it easier for, or easy for me. Now, I've been using the spreadsheet, like I said, for a really long time. I've shared it free. Um, in fact, it's still free. I, I don't charge anyone for what I've done. Um, I've already created. I love sharing the knowledge that I have with all of you to hopefully help you be successful in your business as well. Um, just giving you some of those free tools out there, right? Uh, so I'm going to show you today. We're going to actually pop on the computer and I'm going to show you from step one in numbers, what columns to use, how to add them. Also, I'll show you what I use to filter. So in, uh, you know, Google Sheets and in Excel, you can get really um, in depth with things like pivot tables and, you know, charts and graphs and those type of things. That is not this video. We are going to go very basic 101. If there's a demand for a more advanced uh, video. Cool. We'll go there. But we want to start from the beginning. From those of you that are maybe just starting out, not sure what to do, not sure how to even, you know, really type on the computer. So I'm going to walk you through the basic steps. If you have questions as we go through, do not hesitate to pop those down below. Um, like I said, this was a requested video. I am all about answering as many questions as quickly as possible. So uh, yeah, pop those below as we go through. Let's go ahead and we're going to dive into numbers and we'll take a look. <laughs> so excited. All right, we're going to start here in an already formatted uh, numbers inventory spreadsheet. In fact, this is our brand new for 2021 inventory spreadsheet. I do use a brand new um, sheet or not sheet and brand new file for every single year. It just keeps it organized. I can keep track of it easier. And, you know, as you start to build your inventory, uh, the more items you have listed, the more items you sell, it starts to get a little out of control. Uh, so I like to do a little refresh at the beginning of the year and clean some house. So we're going to take a look at this. Um, now, one thing I didn't mention in the introduction is, you know, I've talked about inventory management and even shared my inventory spreadsheet and how I set it up at Poshmark in 2019. Uh, I was a speaker there. Um, I've done a few things with Poshmark over the years and, um, you know, I haven't changed it since then. It's the exact same thing. Now, I have added a few other tabs that might be of interest to you, like keeping track of your year over year revenue, keeping track of, um, you know, your cost of goods, your profit and loss statement. These are all extra tabs that you can add. That's more for bookkeeping um, processes, but this is really going to be the inventory portion. That is what we're going to hone in on today. So again, I'm showing you right now this is what our current inventory looks like. You can see we have only had a few sales um, so far this year. Uh, well, I don't know if we have all of them marked on here. Uh, these are all of the categories that I utilize. So I'll walk through each of these. And like I said, we'll go through opening up a new tab and creating this. And then I'm going to show you how to easily organize and filter so you can get some of that information that you're looking for really quickly without having to run reports um, or anything extra outside of numbers. 
So the first couple of tabs, the bin and the SKU. When you are putting your items into your inventory, you need to have a tracking method. And I've talked to so many new resellers who, um, you know, don't start with a tracking method. They just kind of put them where they go. Uh, and I'm gonna revert back to when I first started. I, because I only had, you know, what was it? When I first started, I mean, I had like 50 items or something when I first started. So I was keeping things in bins like, all of my tops would go in this bin and all of my bottoms would go in this bin. All of my jackets would hang up, etc. And then as the business started growing, that became a nightmare to manage because sometimes my tops would be really low and the others would be high. So anyway, I gave that up. Instead, I use an inventory system where we have a bin, the bin has a letter, and we're in the process right now of revamping our whole entire inventory system to match because I was converting from numbers to letters. Um, no, I'm converting from letters to numbers. There we go. I'm using numbers now. But that's why you'll see some of these have letters because that was our old way of doing things. Uh, and that will be when it warms up, we will get to that process because right now the shop is freezing and we don't have heat out there. So no, won't be doing that right now. But I always have the bin number and then also a SKU number. Now SKUs, I'm not gonna go into detail with what it is, but it's an identifier for the item. There are a number of ways that you can create SKUs for items. A lot of people put how much they spent on the item, what year they purchased it, maybe what month, um, the number. We're very basic with ours right now and ours just truly is the number, the individual um, unique number identified on that item. Makes it easy to find. And then, uh, we, so we put that there, so then that way when we sell an item, we can go back and see where it is located and pull it very quickly. The next column is listing date. So with listing date, because I wanna keep track of how long something has been listed, you can get this information on your sales report, or I think on your inventory report on Poshmark, but I like to keep track of it um, because that way it's really easy for me to pop in and see, okay, what are my oldest items that we have? Revenue source. This may not be a column that is relevant to you. For us, because we have two different Poshmark closets, we have our modern closet called Flower and Anchor. That's where we do the most revenue. And then we have my passion project, my girly girl style, which was the OG. Uh, that is the vintage closet. And so we do keep track of both of those just so that I can see where the money is coming from. So you may not need that if you don't have multiple revenue um, sources. And then revenue type, again, another column that may not be relevant to you. Because I do handmade or handcrafted items, I like to separate those out when I am looking at my books because I wanna see, is it worth my time? Am I enjoying it? Do I love it? Am I making revenue from handcrafted items? Uh, so I do like to parse that out so I have that information. So those two tabs may be irrelevant to you, may not be necessary. In fact, we won't even include them in the basic sheet that we create here shortly. Category, so with Posh, as, as well as with any other platform, so I know that this is specific to Poshmark just because that's where we sell, but if you're a seller on you know, Mercari or Depop or eBay or whatever it is, these are all gonna be very relevant to you. So a category, what is the item? What is it? Is it shorts? Is it tops? Is it bottoms? What is it? You know, that helps you identifying the item. Also, it helps with trends when you run, um, you know, when you're looking at items. There are reports that you can get. So one of the things that these inventory spreadsheets will not do, it's not gonna give you a lot of data on the basic level. So you will want to, if you want that data, like what brands are selling for you, what items are selling for you, you would wanna invest in something like the Sarah Styles LLC dashboard. Yes, I am an affiliate, but yes, I also use it and I think it's an amazing product. So I do wanna make sure I clarify that. And there is a discount code for you at girlygirlstyle.com if you are interested in checking it out. She's amazing. Then brand, always wanna have the brand. Even if it's vintage, I do a lot of vintage and the brand is almost always vintage unless it's like a designer vintage piece. Then you have your listing title. Can, this is a lot of information that you may not need, but I like to keep all of this information in one location just in case I end up with two items that are very similar in nature. Uh, it helps that I can see like color wise. Um, for example, let's say we went into bin K, right? So we're looking for 11.49 in bin K. Well. Let's say that there is another item that's exactly the same color, the same size, and it doesn't have a number for whatever reason. Who knows? Um, well, if you can look at the brand, you can look through the bags and look at the item and see the brand and make sure you're getting the right thing. So it's, you know, I think that more information is not a bad thing. 
Okay, so that's the first half. That's the first half. Um, and that's everything that's done pre-sale. So that's before the item has sold. The second half is going to be once the item has already sold. So this is the good news, we love this. So you have your order date, which is you know gonna be listed here, sell through. I keep track of this. Um, essentially, this is just telling me how long, when it was initially listed to how long it sold. Uh, that is a formula, so I'm not gonna put that in here um, when we get to the creation process, but I do wanna show you that why I have that there, just because I do keep track of that. Um, I used to keep track of that more when we had a 90-day sell-through sell rate. So our business model used to be 90 days, sell through it. If it doesn't sell within 90 days, let's you know mark it down, let's figure out what's going on, take new pictures. With the way that things have changed over the last year, that has changed. We are no longer on a 90-day uh, cycle. We are sitting at, you can see all those items there are all over 200 days. Um, and we found that that actually is gonna be pretty common for our business right now until things kind of um, reshift uh, as we see in the upcoming year, maybe two years. Order price, obviously this is how much it sold for. Selling fees, you do wanna have those selling fees in there. If there was a shipping discount, you wanna include that. And then you have your total income. Now you'll notice here that letter O, the column is missing, and that's because I also keep track of the buyer's name on Poshmark. Um, or if it's a PayPal uh, purchase, I keep track of their email, and I don't wanna show that information for customer sensitive, um, keep that you know customer information uh, hidden there, but I do include that because then you can filter by the customer and see if you have uh, customers that come back to you. And again, you can get this information. So I wanna make it perfectly clear, you can get this information that I'm showing you here with your Poshmark inventory report. So you can pull that report up and you can play with it. It comes in a CSV file, which is compatible with Excel. Um, so you can do that. You, you don't have to go out and spend a ton of money on an inventory, you know, form. You don't have to spend a lot of time unless you want to customize it. And that's what the purpose of this video is. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at all of this, let's just click the plus button up here at the top left. The plus sign is actually going to add a new sheet to numbers. So if you just are on your Mac, you open up numbers, the plus sign says, hey, we want to create a new sheet. Now it automatically will populate, on my computer anyway, I have it um, automatically populate with a table that looks like this. This is my preferred table format. I like to have the gray and the gray at the top. Um, you can go back and customize color or whatever you wanna do you know, at a later time. But essentially you're just saying, I have a header um, up here. These are gonna be my header titles. And then over here on the left is going to be some additional information. All right. We are gonna have to flip back and forth so we can make sure that we look at both of those um, so we can create recreate it. Now you'll see that in the original, the bin and the skew are both gray. And these are actually called, my brain is not working, um, they are header columns. So a header column, that is a static column, um, and you'll see that I end up locking it or freezing it, so then that way you can always see what that is there. Okay, if we come back here. We are going to, at the very top, we want to create, well, we'll just start from the beginning. So let's just type in bin, not big, bank. So this is going to be our bin column. Now, if we want to create a second column that is going to be a header, so if you're going to do the bin and the skew, all you're going to do is click the little arrow next to A and then choose add header column after. So you want to have, you want that header column to be after, not before, just so that it's in order. And then you'll type in skew. Again, you can change the, the numbers or anything if you're following along, these are just the basics. Then what I would do is I resize. So I grab the little, up here at the column top, I grab the little arrow and I pull it because I like for my spreadsheets to be clean and organized and I wanna see everything kind of in one shot. So we have our bin and skew. The next item that we're gonna do is the listing date and that's just gonna be a standard uh, column right here. So we'll just type in listing date, that's it. Next thing we're gonna put in, uh, in fact, one thing you can do is you can copy and paste. Uh, if you have my free version and you wanna just create your own in practice, you can do that. So I'm typing all this in, but you know, I could go copy and paste uh, Command-C, if you're not familiar, Command-C on the Mac, 
and then you can go back to the block that you want it to go in or the cell you want it to go in and then click Command V. Okay, that'll post it. Now you see it didn't come bold and that would annoy me to no end. So this is a great opportunity to show you. Um, and again, these are silly things. You don't have to spend a lot of time making it pretty, but I think it's important. So all you'll do if you wanna make this bold because it didn't transfer over as bold is you'll click, right? So you'll click it or you can take your mouse and just highlight the whole amount over here. And then over here on the right, you're gonna find a whole other section. And we're gonna get into this a little bit later as we start taking a look at organizing. So when you go to format, because we wanna format that cell. Now, when you think about this cell, what are we formatting? We're formatting the text. So we're gonna click text and then we're gonna come down. You'll see you can change font, you can change the size here. What I want is to make this text bold, so I'm gonna click that. But this is a really good opportunity to just take a look at this you know, property tag or property fields over here on the right hand side and you'll be able to see that you can customize this whatever you want. It doesn't have to be boring. Um, you can make it pretty if you wanna add colors or whatever you wanna do. All right, so running inventory and then our revenue source. Oh, we decided we didn't want revenue source though because <laughs> you don't really need revenue source, do you? Um, and then to make another column, you can actually drag the little arrow here, typically. There we go. So if you drag the arrow to the right with your mouse, it'll automatically put in those new columns for you. Um, so I'm gonna see if that does work. No, nope. it's gonna make me do it one at a time. So we'll just do category. And again, we're not gonna spend a ton of time going through this just because I know that it's gonna get pretty repetitive. And see, now it's coming across with the, uh, with the bold. So that's great news too. It means that I didn't, I don't think I highlighted the whole thing before. Listing title. So then we want our order date. So you'll type in order date, and then you're gonna type in, and I'm not gonna include the sell through. Again, I don't wanna get into formulas, too many formulas here, because we are gonna do some basic formulas. Um, order price, selling, shipping, and total income. We are gonna include all four of those. One, two, three, four. And I don't, oh, and it worked that time, okay. Excellent, so that is the first step. We have our columns and we have our rows, we have our headers. Uh, you might wanna change the table name. I call ours running inventory, inventory 21. Um, again, that's totally up to you. So this is the, this is the bones, this is the, skele the skeleton as we start to dive into how to continue to create this. So next thing I wanna do, um, just the way that my brain works, is you'll see that it's, already been frozen. So those header columns are already frozen. We don't have to do anything there, but let's go ahead and enter some information. So that's the thing that we need to do, enter some information and we can create some basic formulas. Um, again, this is very basic. If you are an advanced user of spreadsheets, you're probably gonna be bored out of your mind. But if you are new to this or you just want a little refresher, um, and I am not the expert, so I wanna make sure that that is clear. I am the type of person that learns by hands-on doing. I teach myself, and some things I teach myself might be the long way around, but I get to where I'm going. Uh, and once you create your inventory sheet on the front end, which may take a little bit of time, you'll see how much time you save when you go to ship out an item. All you have to do, find the bin number, you know, get your shipping label, write it on the back, type in the date and the amount, done, end of story. You don't have to think about it again. All right. So let's type in just some information. We're gonna say it's 001, SKU 101, or 1001. The listing date we'll make, um, let's make it 01, 01, okay? Ooh, all right, another good point to point out because this is something that might come up as you start to build out your, um, your sheet here, your inventory sheet. So you'll notice how the date came out like 1-1. I don't want that. I want it to be one, one, whatever the year is. So guess where we're gonna go again? Over to that format section. And this time we're actually gonna change the cell. So with the cell, you can change what the formatting of that cell is specifically. Like is it currency, is it date, is it just text, is it number, whatever you want it to be. So you'll see it says automatic. Well, we're gonna change that. We want this to actually be date. Now, it does say date and time. However, I never want time on there. 
Um, and in fact, you could have kept it as automatic, I guess, but you can choose how you want this. So I want ours to be 1521. Now that is great. You're like, okay, I did it once. End of story. Every time I enter something, it's going to show up 1121. Um, let's try 1, 2. Well, what happened? We already formatted, but we formatted just that one cell. So let me show you a quick little tip so that you can help with your formatting so much easier. All right, we're gonna delete that information that's in there. We've already formatted the date and time that we want. Now, if you come over to the cell, you're gonna find that if you hover over the cell with your mouse, you're gonna see this little yellow ball right here. This little yellow ball is going to save you so much time. All you're gonna do is take your mouse until you see the little arrow there, click and drag it all the way down for your sheet. What that does is it formats all of those fields so you don't have to do them all individually. It's a lifesaver. You can actually do it up here um, at the column level as well. So if you wanna just do the whole column, you can do that, that saves you time. But I find that if I'm doing like a formula for something, that uh, little yellow ball dragging it tends to save. And again, there might be an easier way, but this is the basics and this is how I taught myself to do it. So we'll just put our date back in there, one, one. Well, that's not one, one. One dash one, and there we go, our format. And then our category, and again, we're just gonna type some data in here um, just so that we have it. Um, you will, here's another tip for you. If you were entering anything from the previous year, so I know some of you are just starting this, but some of your items may have been listed last year, uh, you do need to make sure that you change the date because if I type in 12 right now, 12 anything, and hit just the 12 one, it's gonna take me to 2021 because that's our current year. So we do wanna do 12, um, whatever, you know, whatever the year is, the previous year, make sure you type that in individually, and then maybe we'll do a nine, five, 20. Again, just playing around so we have a little bit of different data. Um, we'll just say they're all women's tops. And again, if you want that to replicate, hover over the yellow and drag it. And that'll replicate anything that is in that field. So now we have some data in the listing category brand and listing title. If we haven't sold anything yet, this is fine. This is just how we're keeping track of the basic inventory. But let's say we made a sale. Let's say we listed the 70s A-line skirt today and we made a sale and we are so excited. So we're gonna put today's date, 1-5. Again, we need to format it. The order price, let's say that that sold for $30. Why not? That's a great price. Um, and again, it needs to be formatted. So we're gonna change this. I'm gonna delete what's in here. I mean, I wanna put the right amount in here. So uh, 30, if you're Poshmark, you know, uh, $6 is the Poshmark fee for selling a $30 item. Uh, you can also format this. So let's go ahead back here. We'll do it this way. We'll make it currency. Now I format my negative amounts. Um, I actually do a negative and then over here on the right, I change the, uh, the color so that it looks like this. It just, for me, it's a visual representation of that negative amount. Um, one thing I found is I started doing more and more spreadsheets though, using the negative sign can actually be a little more challenging as you get into more advanced, um, you know, record keeping and formulas and that kind of thing. So, you know, I already started that way. So for me to go back and change everything to a standard, um, you know, a standard not with not with the negative would be way too much work. So I'm gonna keep it the way I do it, but I'll let you decide. It's just a matter of how we set up the formula, which we are gonna do. Don't be afraid, I promise. It's not gonna be that hard. I'm gonna give you some really good steps. So there's our selling fees and shipping. We're gonna, again, we're gonna format this to currency. Excellent. We're gonna actually change that while we're here. And we're gonna say zero because we did not have any shipping fees. And then this is where we are going to do a little bit of formula. So I know it can be intimidating. You're thinking I'm doing formulas. Oh my gosh, I don't wanna have to learn how to do this. Um, in fact, there are formulas that you can do that can automatically calculate the 20% of the order price. And you know, 
I could do that. I could sit down and do that. But then, of course, I start going into the rabbit hole of, but what if it's less than $15? Then it's a, a flat $2.95 rate. Or what if it's an Etsy purchase? So there are so many, so many factors that can happen with this. So I, again, I try to keep it as simple as possible. So total income. So what is our total income? Our total income is going to be the order price minus the selling fees and minus the shipping. Couple ways you can do this. You can take your mouse and just highlight all three of these squares. So if you're using that negative um, connotation, connotation, negative documentation, I don't know. If you're making the cell actually negative, this is going to work just fine because it's going to take the positive number minus, you know, with the negative numbers and give you the sum. So I highlighted all three of these, and what that does is it's gonna tell me that the sum of those three boxes is going to show up here under total income, okay? Up here at the top right hand, or at the top of the screen, you'll see where it says insert. And this is where you can do a quick formula. You don't have to know how to do formulas. You don't have to know all of that advanced logic. In this case, we want a sum. We want the sum of those three cells. So if we click on sum, there's our sum. Our sum is $24. Let me show you exactly what it's doing because I'm a why person. I like to see the why behind it. Even if I'm doing it the easy way, I want to know the why. So if you get into a situation where you want to create your own formulas, you can, and again, basic. I'm not talking about crazy advanced with conditional logic and all that stuff. No, this is, if I want to figure out the sum of those three using actual formulas typing in that total income, I'll start with the equal sign because that will bring up your formula box. You click sum, you click the box, you click the box, you click the box and enter. There we go. They make it even easier um, because they're automatically going to assume that you're you know, adding this to the negative numbers. Again, you don't need to know all that. Just drag and get to that point right there. So if we want that formula to repeat all the way down, we're gonna do what we did before. You're gonna find, we're gonna find that little yellow dot right here Make sure we drag it all the way down and we're going to see zeros here. And that's a good thing because what it's telling us is it's saying, hey, I'm taking these three cells you just told me to, but there's nothing there. It's going to equal zero. Yes, it is. Uh, so then let's say we make another sale. So we had another sale, another $30 sale. Let's just make it as easy as possible. No shipping discount. There you go. We get that $24. If we make another sale and this one, we'll use a different number just to make it Actually, we'll do 15 minus 2.95, zero shipping. You'll see it's $12.05. So it'll keep a running uh, tally right here of your total income and then all of this information. And then anything that is still outstanding that hasn't been taken out of inventory will still remain on this inventory sheet. So hopefully the formula, the basic formulas that I just showed you, the basic ability to add those together wasn't too scary because what we're going to do next is even easier. I love it so much. Let's click over here on the right hand side. At the very top, you're going to see this other button, show or hide, sort, filter, and category options. If you click organize, okay, you'll see that you have a number of tools here. Let me show you how Bill uses this. So the sort tab. Now, Bill's the one that ships out most of our items. So we make a sale, you know, I'm at my day job, I'm in my office, his office is next door. We make a sale, he will go to the inventory spreadsheet in the computer in his room um, or in his office, he'll locate the item. Now, easiest way to do that that we found, we I like to do Command F. Command F, if you click Command F, it's like com Command Find. Think about it that way. So you sold a, the Nike shirt. So you're searching for Nike. Well, it's going to take me to every instance of Nike in this spreadsheet. Uh, but let's go over here. And so you search for Nike and it'll come up with this. What Bill does, because what he finds ease of use, is actually to sort the entire inventory sheet by brand. Um, so he'll sort the entire table, click on add a column. This is how you want to sort it. So he would click brand and it automatically will alphabetize those brands for you. This I found actually useful when I was doing inventory because when we did inventory at the end of the year, I found that we were off only like 18 items, which, well, it was more than that. And then we found them, um, 
you know, that happens. Inventory can be off, things get misplaced or whatever. Um, with our case, what I found is when I sorted by brand, we actually had a few items that were listed twice, that were entered twice. Uh, we honed our system. Now we don't enter anything directly into the spreadsheet. It goes to a, a different area um, first. But anyway, so that's a great, great other use for that sort feature. You can also sort if you want to sort by, you know, anything. Bin, if you are redoing your bins and you want to sort by bin or you want to inventory your bins, you can sort by that. But let's take a look at something that I love called categories. So categories is how I figure out all of our monthly information, all of our monthly data that I use in our profit and loss statement. So I'll go over here to categories and I'll say, I'm going to add a category. I want order date. So the order date is sorting your inventory sheet by the date it was purchased. So I use order because it was the day it was ordered. Um, and that's the terminology. I think that's the terminology Posh uses. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's why I call it order date. So you can do by day, but what I do is by month because I like to organize my data monthly so that I can see how much money we made for the month, um, how much fees we paid, that kind of thing. So I've sorted it by monthly. Now you'll find here, um, so we had three sales in January of 2021, here they are. And then this one that says blank is because we haven't sold this one yet. So this one's still remaining in our inventory. Again, depending on how many items you still have in inventory, you'll see those here. Um, if those bother you, you can just click the arrow and they disappear. You don't have to look at them. Uh, let's, I'm gonna do one little thing just to show you another example. Let's say that the order date here was, let's say, well, we don't want it to be 21, right? Because we haven't, we're not at there yet. 20. There we go. Okay, so now we have a little bit more data to play with. It's, it's more fun when you have multiple um, data points. So we have our January of 2021 and our December of 2020. So you'll see that we can do a couple of things. Now that we've sorted this by our month, we can come over here to the order price. When you click in that box above the amount for or below that column header, you'll see that there's a little gear icon. Oh, this is gonna get good. Click the gear icon and you can click subtotal. And now it adds it all up for you. You do not have to go and get your calculator, um, which I do love my calculator, I can't do math in my head, but you don't have to do it, it's all right there, easy peasy. And you'll also see that if you do it at the top level, it'll actually, or if you do it at any level, it'll automatically do it throughout the column. So that's great news. So if you had another, let's say that this one, again, we'll make another data point so you can see the difference. Hasn't happened yet, but you know, we'll be optimistic. So now we have three months, January, February, and December. And you'll see that here you can say, hey, January, I made $30. February, I made $30. And then in December, I made $15. So you'll get that amount. But you can also do that right here with your selling fees, with your shipping fees, and haha, -ha, with your total income. So this is how you can figure out that total income amount very easily per month without having to do a ton of formulas or anything. Just use that organize option. Now, if you're doing that within your inventory spreadsheet, like I said, if I don't remove this category, this might get a little, you know, a little frustrating if someone else was gonna be using it. Uh, so you can turn it off and on anytime you want. Doesn't really affect it. But if you do change the categories, you'll have to go back and re um, format the subtitles or subtitles, subtotals, etc. One other thing that I also like to do uh, to make it easy for me to count, and again, I'm sure there's another way to do this. But if um, I only type an order date if something has sold. What I also do is I will choose count. Uh, and the reason that I'll choose count is because this will keep a count of how many items are in, well, how many cells have information in that month. 
Why is that important? Um, well, if you want a quick at a glance of how many items sold that month, uh, we know that only one sold, so this is easy. But what if you had 50? You don't wanna go through and add all 50 up in your head or with your calculator. So the count option is nice, and the reason I choose order date to put it in is just because it is one of those categories that you only fill out once it's sold. If it's not sold, there's nothing there, so you won't get a mistaken amount there. So that is the basics of creating an inventory spreadsheet from scratch in numbers. If there are any questions that I did not answer, make sure you pop those down in the comments below. Also, if you want me to do additional videos on um, the other sheets that I utilize, like the PL sheet, that sheet is super important, but it does get into a little bit more, um, a little bit more advanced in formulas. Not too much though, not scary advanced, but it does take a little bit more time to go through those. So if you want to see any more videos that have to do with keeping track of your spreadsheets, keeping track of your inventory or how you create it, um, again, let me know in the comments, 100%. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Um, and I'm always here to answer questions to the best of my ability. Also, if you watch this for some reason and you're an expert, let me know what tips and tricks you have. I am always interested in learning and making my life easier. Um, and I would love to hear from all of you. So that is it, everybody. Hopefully this is helpful. Don't forget, you can get my free spreadsheet, the basics, um, with all of this already done for you, if you want to utilize that, um, just by going to girlygirlstyle.com and clicking the free inventory sheet. It downloads right away. Nothing else to it. Uh, so that's it, everybody. Have a great day. And until next time, see ya.